Hello and welcome again to this 13th session in our series on bite-sized theology. Uh, the textbook again that we, we're using uh, is this book, Bite-sized Theology, an ABC of the Christian Faith by Peter Jeffrey. That's Bite-sized Theology, an ABC of the Christian Faith by Peter Jeffrey. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the doctrine of justification. That act that God does that makes us acceptable to him by a pronouncement that he makes a legal declaration that God makes concerning an individual. Now, when Paul in Romans 8, chapter 8, verse 30, gives an overview of the process by which God applies salvation to us, he mentions justification explicitly those whom he predestined he also called and those whom he called he also justified and those whom he justified he also glorified now the word called as it is used here refers to the effective calling of, of the gospel <coughs> which includes <clears throat> regeneration and brings forth the response of repentance and faith or conversion on our part. After effective calling the net and the response that it initiates on our part, the next step in the application of redemption is justification. Here, Paul mentions that it, this is something that God himself does. Those whom he called, he also justified. Paul quite clearly teaches that this justification comes after our faith and as God's response to our faith. He says in Romans 3, 26, that God, quote, justifies him who has faith in Jesus. And in Romans 8, I mean, 3, 28, he says that a man is justified by faith apart from works of the law. And he says in Romans chapter 5, verse 1, that since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And in Galatians 2.16, Paul says, a man is not justified by works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. Justification is the sovereign work of God in which he declares the guilty sinner to be righteous and the rightful demands of the law to be satisfied. Justification is the opposite of condemnation. We are condemned by God because of sin and if we were to appear before his throne of judgment, we, he would find us guilty and sentence us to an eternity in hell. And the verses for that, are, uh, for our purposes, is John chapter 3, verses 18 to 20. And I'd like to read those for you. And this, it reads as such, quote, 
He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed. That's Romans chapter three, I mean, John chapter three, verses 18 to, to 20. And uh, to sentence us to an eternity in hell because of our sin, that would be a correct and legal verdict. In justification, God the judge pronounces us acquitted of the charge. He does not say we are innocent because we are not, but we are acquitted. We are not condemned, but declared to be acceptable to the holy God. Bearing in mind our guilt and that we deserve hell, this has to be the supreme demonstration of God's love and grace. How can God do this? If we are guilty, how can he pronounce us to be pardoned? Does he bend the law? Does he turn a blind eye to our sin? Does he forget all of the declarations of judgment he has made upon sin? <coughs> Excuse me. He does none of these things. He cannot ignore sin and still be a holy God. If God is to justify us, he must do it in a way that makes sure that he remains just and holy. How God does this, we are told in Romans chapter three, verses 21 to 26, and I'd like to read those verses for you. But now the righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, who God set forth as a propitiation by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness because mm -hmm. in his forbearance, God had passed over the sins that were previously committed to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. That passage ends, finishes in other words, with the words, that God is just and the one who justifies, the one who has faith in Christ. Justification not only takes away condemnation, but gives us a righteousness. And it is this righteousness that is the basis on which God now deals with us. This righteousness, says Romans 3.21, is apart from the law. That means it has nothing to do 
with how we have kept the law. It is not something that was left in us after the fall of Adam. It is an alien righteousness given to us by God. In fact, it is Christ's righteousness. God credits us with the righteousness of his sinless son. That's what he does. You talk about grace. That is a great demonstration of God's grace. His all sufficient grace. This is a staggering truth. And it is at the heart of the Christian gospel. As a matter of fact, justification is the doctrine on which the Christian faith stands or falls. But that's for another time. Our own righteousnesses is like filthy rags to God. We take a look at Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6, where we read, but we all, we are all like an unclean thing, and our righteousnesses are like filthy rags. We all fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. If we ought to be acceptable to God, we need something better than that. And in Philippians chapter 3, verse 9, Paul delights that now that he is a Christian, he has found the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. Let me read Philippians 3, 9 for you. And be found in him not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is, <coughs> excuse me, that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. And Isaiah expresses the same joy, the exact same joy, as Paul, when he says, I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness. And that is Isaiah chapter 61, verse 10. And then Romans chapter 3 gives us good insight as to how justification works. First insight we'll look at is in Romans chapter 3, verse 22, <coughs> where, <coughs> excuse me, where we're told that justification comes to us through faith. And in Romans 3.22, we read, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe, for there is no difference. Another good insight is found in uh, chapter 3 of Romans, verse 24. And <coughs> there... <coughs> Excuse me. We find that this grace is, I mean, justification is a product of God's grace. And Romans 3.24 reads, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. And finally, for our purposes uh, today, the next insight we get in in Romans 3 here is in, chap in uh, chapter 3, verse 25. 
And there we find that Christ was our propitiation or sacrifice for our sins. And Romans 3.25 reads, whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood through faith. In giving his son to die in our place, God demonstrated his justice. Our sins are not overlooked. They are dealt with exactly as God had always said that they should be dealt with. They are punished. But because they had been laid on Jesus, and he has taken responsibility for them, he takes our punishment instead of us. Doesn't that bring something familiar to mind? He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement that brought us peace fell on him. By his stripes, we are healed. But a merciful God, we serve. If it so be that you have put your trust in Jesus Christ, he has borne the wrath for your sake and mine. He has taken the punishment. He felt the blows. He endured the abandonment by his own father to pay the cost for you and me. If it so be that we'll put our trust in him. And if you have not trusted Christ as Lord and Savior, how could you turn away? How could you say no to such grace? Don't let your sin cause you to love darkness rather than light. Turn away from your evil. Turn to Christ, I would urge you. Our sins are credited to Jesus. And God treats Jesus. Gosh, I can hardly see it. God treats Jesus as he should treat us. He is forsaken and dies in our place. Jesus' righteousness is credited to us and God treats us as he has always treated Jesus. We become his children and he owns us as his redeemed people. We are to God a very peculiar and special possession. <laughs> such grace, such grace, such amazing grace that God would go to such lengths for your salvation and for mine. Today, if you hear the Spirit's voice, do not harden your heart. Flee to Christ, turn to Christ, embrace Christ. Embrace his sacrificial death on your behalf and my behalf. In closing, I want to read for you a quote by Martin Lord Jones. And it says this, speaking of justification, it does not mean, quote, quote, it does not mean we are made righteous. 
but rather that God regards us as righteous and declares us to be righteous. This has often been a difficulty for many people. They say that because they are conscious of sin, within they cannot be in a justified state. But anyone who speaks like that shows immediately that he has no understanding of this, <laughs> excuse me, great and crucial doctrine of justification. Justification makes no actual change in us, but is a declaration by God concerning us. It is not something that results from what we do, but rather something that is done for us. We have only been made righteous in the sense that God regards us as righteous and pronounces us to be righteous. What a worthy quote. Well, that's, we've come to the end of this session, so. Let's close with prayer. Our Father, we thank you for this great and lofty doctrine. What a demonstration, an amazing demonstration, oh Lord, of the grace, the all-sufficient grace of God. Thank you, Lord, that you declare us righteous, that you clothe us in the righteousness of Christ, It's an alien righteousness to us because it does not originate in us or come from us. It is the righteousness of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, that you treat us today who know Christ as Lord and Savior as you've always treated Jesus, but on the cross, on the cross of oh God, you treated Jesus like we should have been treated. He was nailed to a cross where we should have been nailed to a cross. He suffered the agony that we should have suffered. Thank you for the substitutionary death, the substitutionary sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray that any listening in or who has not yet trusted Christ as Lord and Savior would do so today. Thank you and praise you for this amazing doctrine of justification. In the name of him who justified us, we pray. Amen. <laughs>